Hi, this is Josh from Over the Shoulder Coding. And today I'm making a video about CSS grids. So on my last video, Flexbox Froggy, Alchemy Forge reached out and asked about a CSS grid tool. And CodePip also made Grip Garden, which teaches you CSS grid in a similar way to teaching you Flexbox. So we're gonna go through CSS grid, Grid Garden, and learn all about CSS grids. So the point of this game is to water your plants. So you're growing these carrots and you need to put the water in the right grid by using grid column or other grid properties. So we can use grid column start to put the water class, the grids that represent water in the right grid. So if we put them in three for grid column start, they'll start at the third column, so the columns go one, two, three, and it'll water the carrots, so they'll grow. And, uh-oh, looks like we have some weeds growing in the corner. We can use grid column start to poison them by putting this poison over in grid column five. So we can do the same thing and get them there. When we use grid column start, it is by default just one column, but we can extend it across multiple columns using the grid column end property. So we already have grid column start for water starting at column one, and we wanna use grid column end to end the column, to end the water after column three. So end it at four. When pairing grid column start and grid column end, you might assume that the end value has to be greater than the start value, but this turns out not to be the case. So we can set the grid column end to be less than five. So we can set it to two, and so it'll start here at five and go all the way to two. We can even set it to be negative values. So we can set grid column end to be a negative value to count from the right hand side. So if we use grid column end and we say negative one, then it's gonna start from the right hand side. If we go negative two, it's gonna go right here. So here we can say grid column start to be negative two and make it two over to move the poison to the weeds. Another way to use grid columns and define the width is to use the span keyword. So instead of saying the exact column that it's gonna start and end at, we can say the column it's gonna start as well as the span. So the span is basically how many columns the water is going to stretch across. So if we say grid column end and we span, the default is one, but if we set it to two, it's going to span across these two columns. So we can use N to stretch across these five columns. So we can also define the end without the start and we can do grid column start and three. So it's gonna span starting three away from the end. And span we can also use span to define the starting if we have the end defined so if the end is six we can have the start span three away so we just define the absolute number of columns that it spans you can't do a negative span value, but you can say that the end is here, so we're going to go three back, or that the start is here, so we're going to go three forward. 
Now typing grid column start and grid column end is a little bit cumbersome. So we can combine the two to just type grid column as a shorthand for the two. This is like flex flow from the previous video. So we can do grid column start at two and end at four, like an example. And we have defined the start and end. So if we want to solve this, we can do four and end at six to water our carrots. We can also use span in grid column. So we can do grid column start at two span three. So we have the start and we're spanning three instead of writing grid column end. So just like grid column start, we also have grid row start, which defines which row in the grid the water is going to start at. So we can hit grid row start three and start the water at row three. And in the same way as we had grid column, we can also use grid row as a shorthand for grid row start and grid row end. So we can start the row at three and we can say span three so that starts at row three and goes across three rows. And we can use both on the poison to define the column and the row that it's in. So we can use grid column two and grid row five to put it on the second column and the fifth row. We can also make it stretch across larger areas. So if we do grid column and start at the second column and finish at the fifth column or the sixth column and grid row and grid row starting at the first column and we can use span to go across five. We can stretch this water across these 20 cells. So we can even further combine this and just use grid area. So grid area is a combination of grid row and grid column. So the first value is going to be the row start, then the column start. Then the next two values are going to be row end and column end. So we can do grid area, start it at the second, first row, second column, and end it at the fourth row and the sixth column. So we can have multiple items. So we have water one and we have a water two and we're going to modify water two. Water one's already covering this and we're going to stretch water two to cover this square here. So we're going to have a grid area starting at column three or row two, column three and ending at row five and column six. and ending at column six. So just like in Flexbox, we can also use order to move around these different items. So for the poison, we can order it to be after all the water classes. So we can say poison is gonna have order of one and be displayed after the water classes because they have order zero. By default, all grid items have order zero and you can set positive and negative values. So on the next one, we'll show you that for this one, we want the poison to have a negative value. So it'll be in front of all the water. If you like this video so far, please give a like and subscribe to the channel so you can know when the next video is coming out. The next part of this is covering grid layout. So we can use grid template, grid template columns and grid template rows to define the layout of a grid. So far, we've only given each column 20% of the width and having five columns.
but we can set it up however we like. So we can set up the first column to have 50% of the width. And so you'll see what that looks like. So now this water that's just in column one stretches all the way across to 50% of the grid. So far in all of these examples, you've seen the rows and the columns laid out by listing each individual rows width or height individually. But we can use the repeat function to define multiple rows or multiple columns at the same time. So we can do grid template columns with repeat to define eight columns each with width 12.5% of the grid. We can also use a mix of percentages, length, pixels to define the different columns and rows without any issue. So we can have some defined by pixels and some defined in other ways. So grid template columns, we can say 100 pixels. You can say 100 pixels for the first one, three, 40%. and it all works just fine. We can also use fractions to define the size of the rows or columns. And each fraction unit, FR, allocates one share of available space. So if we have two elements and one gets one share and the other gets four shares, they divide all four by one fourth and three fourths. So here the weeds take up one sixth and the carrots take up the remaining five, six. So we have six shares overall, and we're gonna divide them between the weeds and the carrots. So we can use grid template rows and one share for the weeds and five shares for the carrots. So we can use grid template columns and give one share to the weeds and five shares to the carrots. So when columns use pixels, percentages, or EMs, the remaining columns set with fractions will div up the remaining space that's left over. So here, the carrots on the left only take up 50 pixels and the weeds on the right also take up 50 pixels. So we'll set up those two columns, 50 pixels each, and just divide the remaining space in the middle between three columns. So I use the repeat function to define these three columns as repeating values. So in this example, we have a column of 75 pixels of weeds on the left side of the garden, and the remaining space is 3 fifths carrots and 2 fifths weeds. So we can combine those two and define a space of 75 pixels for the weeds on the left, and then three shares for the water and two shares for the weeds on the right. So grid template rows work the same as grid template columns. And we can use grid template rows to water all but the top 50 pixels of the garden. Of the garden. If we define a 50 pixel row at the top and 
water only the fifth row. So we'll divide the 50 pixels among four rows and water the fifth row, which is the remainder. So we're going to set up four rows of 12.5 pixels each. And the one share at the end waters the rest of the garden. Just like with grid area, we can use grid template to combine rows and columns. And we can use grid template to water an area that includes the top 60% of the grid and only the left 20 pixels. So in this one, the rows also come first. So we will use grid template and define the 60% and 40% and 200 pixels so we have a row that's 60 percent up here 40 percent down here and then a column that's 200 pixels wide all right so on the last level we have a 50 pixel path on the bottom as well as 20 percent of your carrots being overrun with weeds so we'll do grid template and we will define one share for all the rows up at the top and 50 pixels for the bottom path. Then we're going to define the left 20% for the poison and the remainder for carrots. So we have everything else except for the 50 pixels at the bottom taken up by the row, the 20% taken up by the poison, and then everything else being taken up by the water. So that was CSS Grid Garden. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and support me on Patreon so I can find time to make more videos like this. Comment down below if you want me to do any other videos or have any questions. Thanks, and I'll see you later.